as um, what it is now and there wasn't all the different possibilities of contamination then that there is now? What all the additives. The cabbages and stuff. Did that need to be canned to preserve it, or would it no, just no, no, no. The, the, the sauerkraut, they just left in the crock. They mixed it up with salt, and as if I remember, there was like a, they put a lid on it, which would keep it down in the brine, yeah. mm -hmm. and it stayed like that for most of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure that probably when it finally got to the summertime and also they wanted to clean the crock out, that they would probably can what was left, but I know that most of the basements that I remember in, they didn't have to worry about anything getting all that warm, Right. that it spoiled. Because if, even if you had it, you put it in the back basement, if you had a back basement, and it all, you kept the door closed, and it was probably auto, always 15, 20 degrees colder in the back one. Because I remember we stored potatoes yep. in both of the farmhouses I grew up in, and they didn't really start to sprout until maybe Spring March. Time or early April. Mm -hmm. I was going to just add that about the potatoes. We would get a truckload of potatoes from out east someplace and Grandpa would bring them home, bring them downstairs in the uh, bags. They were the mesh bags that we got the milk. Yeah. And when it got to be March, they would be getting sprouts on. And Grandma sat there with five, six bushels left, she sat down in the basement and picked all the eyes off so they would last longer. Right. Who would do that nowadays? Oh. Uh, didn't they preserve carrots in dirt? Yes. 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 Yeah. I'm sure That's they did, but did I yes. asked Martha because her dad had the vegetables. Because she's older. <laughs> her dad had the muck farm and had the vegetable farms. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, too, that I always remember dad bringing a couple of bushel of potatoes but they put the muck on there, the dirt, mm -hmm. oh. to keep it, keep them, uh, well, it just well, helped to preserve them better, but also a bushel of carrots Please. for all winter. Mm -hmm. And we would go down, and when Paul says basement, believe me, they were not basements. No, so. yeah, they weren't. Well, our, our basements are deeper than the one you grew up in. Well, yeah, those yeah. cellars, they, they were like medieval caves. <laughs> <laughs> the old root cellar, yeah. There's mm -hmm. a basement, of course, but we called it the cellar because, as you can see, all the stones of the of the cellar yeah, as they were built in all the wine barrels, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cider yeah. barrels, and cider, cider barrels, yeah. cider barrels, and then there was a, always a co big coal bin that you could get the coal yeah. dust on you. Right. And um, yeah. but of, of course there was a section for my mother's canned goods, a lots of lots and lots of canned goods. But definitely I remember also mm -hmm. even cabbage we kept down there in bushel yeah. baskets mm -hmm. with with yeah. dirt on top, and then you just peeled off the old ones that got wilted and the nice fresh inside and I brought this this is from outside now but, but it's the same idea that trenching the celery when I talked about the muck farm here uh, they're what they're doing is they're standing here and they're they're taking the celery and um, putting dirt up against the muck against the celery rows and then that was there until even November when it snowed and we have the moving picture of when they would drive down with the horses in the wagon, and then they would untrench this. They would dig this celery out, and it was as crystal as glass, my mother always said. Yeah. So very good tasting, too. So the, the trenching celery, they don't do anymore now because it's really labor intensive. But uh, it, it definitely was a way to preserve that celery before it would rot um, and before the snow would freeze it. But this kept it, this preserved it. So just like keeping the things in the cellar, too. A lot of things were dried, too. I remember my dad mm. talking about my grandmother drying apples oh, yeah. because everybody had the wood burner, and the wood burner was always kept going in the fall of the year. So she had a metal tray and a piece of brown paper on there, and she cut the slices of the apple and put them on there, and then I had to tell my dad and his younger brother to keep their fingers off. <laughs> or somebody was bought them, and I made the, did that a couple times myself. Homemade dried apples are much better than the ones you buy in the store. <laughs> and, and then did you just eat the dried apples or did, did you They had recipes them? that called for it. Like for pies? But you could also use them for a snack too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would, would they reconstitute if you added water? Right. Oh yeah, they'd absorb the water again. Oh. To make like pie filling and stuff. Probably not as, uh, not all of the fluid, they'd probably be chewier than what a uh, normal fresh apple pie would be.
But if you add your spices to it and whatever all else, I'm sure nobody complained. And then, as long as we're on apples, apple butter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've made it up in, in a big kettle outside, but, but we canned it or froze it. But they tell me that years ago they used to put it in a, a right. pot, maybe a little yeah. smaller than this, or, a, yep. you know. And then you just put bigger, William? And then you just put it, part of your house was always really cold in the back shed or a back bedroom or something. And they just covered it with like newspaper and tied it around it. And if it got a little mold on it, they just took it off. Took it, it off. Okay, thank you, Daya. Yeah. And also the getting back to the meat. My grandmother, instead of stuffing all of the, making that kind of smoked sausage, she would take some and she would make patties, like almost like a hamburger patty, like this, and maybe that thick. And she she would cook them all the way through. She would fry them first. Cook them all, fry them up all the way through. And then she'd take, I didn't bring, it, bring any bigger cocks, but probably a two or three gallon cock. I remember her taking them out of this. She'd put a little lard in the bottom, and then she'd put a layer of these patties. Then she put some more lard, and then she put a layer of patties. Lard, patties, lard, patties, until mm. she got to the top. And they also kept real good as long as they were kept in a cold in, in the back, back shed. With just newspaper and an old rubber tire, that's what you say. Say it comes to the old Morocco. Yeah, to make the rubber band on the rubber band. And then she would just take them out when you wanted a fast supper, or any supper probably, and heat them up on a frying pan, and they were done. But uh, I haven't heard of many other people doing that that way. So I don't know if that's something that was... How about now they tell us all, no fat, no salt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget, every, and I agree with you, because they told me to watch out on my salt, but I think we have to remember their lifestyle was far more active right. than what yeah. I was. Physical and, <laughs> and one other thing that I, like I said, I've seen this on this program, I think because they ate so much more food that had vinegar in it, mm -hmm. like pickles and sauerkraut and stuff like that, I think that also changed some of the microorganisms that you have in your stomach and intestines that we don't have now because the diet was different. I mean, let's face it, they survived and they kept on going and nowadays, <laughs> I, I, I where I work, I work with some young kids and I tell them about different things and they look at me and go, you're gonna die. And I says, you don't die that fast. I go, nowadays you do because everybody is so, so acclimated to this, that, and the other. But I go, think about it. It's only been within the last 50, 60 years that humanity has had a lot of things that we have now. Right, all the snack. I mean, just think of the medical changes for the, the medicines and penicillins that we've had since the Second World War. Before that, it was like, good luck. But even when I was a kid, you, 